Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is the Darkest Dungeon Strategy and Tactics Episode 2. So in our last episode we ran through the tutorial nice and quick and easy like. So today begins our first adventure into a proper dungeon. Uh, we've got ourselves our uh, starter team here, seated of course with um, uh, with the two guaranteed arrivals on the stagecoach in, in week one, our Plague Doctor and our uh, Vestal here. Um, got them uh, all prepped and ready to go. Not that there's not not that there's not that there is much prep you can do for them uh, this early in the game, while most of the other buildings are locked. Um, so uh, let's uh, nothing really to it but to embark. All right, uh, and only uh, one choice here. Um, so we're gonna pit uh, Renald here in front. Dismas is a good spot for a second. Arundel is for third, and Guron is fourth. Now, this is probably the intended lineup they were having when they gave us the Plague Doctor and the Vestal. Uh, but that being said, depending on their seated skills, sometimes it might work out to have them in slightly different positions. Um, especially with the uh, with the, with the Vestal, as if you get one with a whole bunch of frontline stuff, you might want to stick her in maybe the second position, um, along with the party heal. Depends on what their skills are, but their present skills um, uh, lend them to being in these positions. And again, the preferred position uh, dots here are a very good way of uh, sort of judging where your guys uh, should be sitting, or where they want to be sitting. Um, all right, so let's get going. Now provisions. Okay, now the the recommended from the tutorial says eight food and four torches, and you know what? That's not bad. If you want to be a little bit more conservative, if you don't mind spending the extra gold just to be sure, yeah, you can go with eight food. If you want to cut it a little close, maybe go with four food. Uh, but you either way, you want to buy your food in blocks of four, unless you have people who eat different amounts of food. Uh, because otherwise, when the, when feeding time comes around, you're, they're going to eat one food per person, and assuming your whole party is still alive, that's how much you're going to consume. So, you know what, let's, um, let's go for, um, yeah, let's go for the, uh, let's go for the egg food. Now, the other, uh, oh yeah, torches, I'm only going to take three. Uh, we're not going to be going for a low light run, at least not not at the moment. Uh, later on in this series, I will be exploring low light runs and what have you. Uh, now, other things that you can do. Um, I like to bring a shovel, a singular shovel, because the amount of expense it requires to heal up the extra stress needed from uh, having to manually tear down a wall should you encounter it is more than worth it. The other thing I'm going to try uh, uh, bringing along with us is a single skeleton key, because chances are, even in a small dungeon, you're going to run into at least one chest, and having a skeleton key will give you um, uh, superior results from it, and therefore more loot. Probably a lot more loot than the 200 gold we're spending just to buy the key. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's run with that. Okay, so... Uh, first thing you want to do before you uh, head adventure forth is to zoom out the mini map and see what kind of map you're dealing with here. Um, so this is actually not too bad of a dungeon. Every dungeon is randomly den generated and the room layouts are going to be a little bit different. Um, and the major differences that you're going to encounter is how many uh, forced backtrackings are you going to be thinking. Imagine if, for example, this room right here was just tacked on to the end right over here. At that point, uh, it would be kind of a no-brainer which way we go through the dungeon, and we'd be at zero risk of having to backtrack. Now, the question becomes, once we get here, do we go off in here and check out this room, or do we just go through this whole dungeon in hopes that this is not a room battle, because you need that to complete your quest. If it is a room battle and we skip it, that's a whole lot of backtracking that we're going to have to do. Um, so my, my ideal suggestion is, uh, well the ideal thing is by when we get to this room we want to be at maximum light, radiant light, to get that scouting, maximum scouting chance. Because scouting par uh, proc will uh, tell us what is in this room, and if we know that it's an empty room then we know we can safely skip it, and if we know it's not an empty room then it's not. So let's get started here. Obviously our first move here is... Uh, 
Uh, nothing wrong with uh, uh, crates here. Always, always uh, crafted some crates. Ah, not much you can do against that uh, uh, without scouting. Okay, so we are at Radiant Light 76, but uh, the minute we walk through that door, it's going to go down a notch. And um, this, as far as I can tell, the scouting chance calculation is done once you're in the room. So I'm going to kick a, kick up another torch just to put us back at 100. All right, this is an empty room, and we don't get the scouting chance. Poop. All right, and given this dungeon layout, and given how much of a downside it is if we uh, if we skip this room and it ends up being required, I'm gonna go for it uh, and just eat the one extra backtrack in case it isn't required. Jeebus! Well, you you're supposed to be you're supposed to be good at dodging trap. Well, sort of good at dodging traps. Grave diggers are, are more the trap experts. At least we're getting some heirlooms out of the deal. And here, there, here's an extra torch. Here's the other reason why I only bring three instead of four. Chances are you're going to wander into one of those. Okay, so we did an unnecessary backtrack. But you know what? Risk management, I, I don't regret it. Um, and we got the extra torch, so the extra torchlight that we're burning here, not so much a problem. Okay, uh, let's kick up another torch here since uh, it is worth it. And we do want to get scouts when we can because that can help us avoid those stupid traps. Ah, the sarcophagi. Um, don't touch them unless you've got medicinal herbs. Uh, more often than not, something bad's going to happen. So let's walk that right by that. Oh, for Pete's sake. Sheesh, these traps are going to be the death of me. Okay, now, remember that uh, remember that skeleton key we got? This thing, this locked display cabinet, is always going to be trapped unless you have a skeleton key. We have one. And look at that. Uh, two deeds, 250 gold. So this, just in the gold alone, we've already paid for that key. And we got uh, three uh, heirlooms out of the deal as well. So, good investment. And the key's gone now, so it's no longer taking up an inventory slot. Ah, our first battle of the day. Okay, so... Boy, it looks like this is going to be a high-stress run here, given, uh, given that. Okay, so, tactics. Um, all right, so for R and L, uh, like I said, their their stuff um, their stuff is not really the best of what I was hoping for. Um, we could go for a disorienting blast and hope that the one of the bone courtiers uh, shuffles all the way to the front, uh, which prevents them from doing their uh, tempting goblet. But there's no guarantees of that. Uh, all of these guys are undead, so they all have a 100% bleed resist, so we're not going to bother with the incision. Uh, so Noxious Blast is our best bet here, because the Blight can affect them. Now, unfortunately, I'd love to target these guys, can't. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to... Um, yeah, we'll just go for the guy in the back here. Big de-stress bill to pay here. Okay, so our next um, our next uh, one up here is here. Now, smite is actually probably one of the better things to go for here. If we go for a smite, hero damage uh, six to thirteen. Now in here, we uh, we have a have almost a, a fairly healthy chance to uh, to take this guy down in one hit, and he hasn't acted yet, so that would uh, give us uh, a net benefit for that. Not to mention, um, our, um, our highwaymen would be, even if we don't kill him, our highwaymen would be able to pull off a very effective grape shot to hurt him and uh, this guy back here as well. So I think I'm going to go for the smite. Oh. Every time I give a big lecture as why you want to go for a smite, <laughs> they dodge it. Boy. All right, a couple options here. Um, I'm going to go for the dazzling light since we couldn't kill him. Might as well take him out of the fight temporarily, if not permanently. There we go. Didn't get a chance to act. All right, I'm going to go for the Grape Shot Blast. This guy is at four hit points, but he's going to take two damage next time he acts. 
uh, Grape Shot Blast uh, will do two to five damage. So as long as I don't miss, this guy is going to be killed by it one way or another. And the extra damage on everyone else. Yep, see, there he goes. Didn't get a chance to attack. Oh, and he gets to go again, which means as long as we don't miss, uh, this Bone Rabble's dead as well. And we'll get started on all these guys. So maximum Grape Shot value here. Boom. Knife in the dark. See, you force these guys to the front. Yeah, well, unfortunately, oh, man, you guys are just freaking te poking on him, and it is not good to uh, not good to have one member break early because they're gonna just start spreading the stress around to everyone else, provided it's a negative one. Okay, so um, let's see here. So you're at two hit points. So pretty much anything is going to kill you. Uh, you're at seven. We're going to, um, hmm. yeah, let's just, let's finish him off. Fewer targets to worry about. Okay. Now, unfortunately, she does not have the single uh, target heal, uh, which is what I would normally be doing on uh, Dismas here. But we're going to have to go with that. Not very good value because uh, he's at full. She's at full, rather. All right. Smite, not going to elaborate there. Smite did its job. That's more like it. Now, what do we have here? Just an a sarcophagus, not uh, not a locked one. So it's uh, fairly safe to open up one of these. That being said, there's a, there's a few things in here. There is still a risk. And when you're dealing with a risky object, um, you might want to choose a person who is... Uh, uh, who might be disposed of at the end of the mission, like, say, our person who can never heal stress. Uh, so I'm going to have her crack it open, just in case she gets the bad uh, in, uh, effect from it. Hidden treasures! See? And you get a good effect, like uh, treasure, that goes to the party, and everyone's happy. So huzzah. Still no uh, scouting here, so let's uh, let's move onwards. I have a feeling our, uh, our highwayman is going to go nuts. Oh, uh, uh, that was his kleptomaniac uh, trait going on. So he looted that and ninjaed the contents for himself. Greedy bastard. And another shovel. All right, well, at least 8,000 gold. If we hit any walls, we'll be... Ah! All right. Now, we need to be very aware of what she's doing because she's got the ability to spread uh, even more stress around. That being said, a grape shot blast here wouldn't really do us any favors. Nobody's close enough to really be harmed by it significantly. Uh, so I'm going to go for the open vein on our human uh, cultist brawler here who is, who is susceptible to, uh, uh, to a bleed. Nice. Not quite enough to, uh, ooh, she's going for the Eldritch Pull. Aha, good. Now, this bleed is not going to be enough to uh, kill the Brawler, unfortunately. Uh, as much as I would love it to. Uh, but he hasn't gone yet, so it would behoove us to kill him first. Uh, let's see, uh, accuracy base 80, accuracy base 75. We're going to go with a more accurate attack and finish him off. I know, a bit of a waste of a bleed and he'd die in two turns, but killing him now prevents him from getting an attack off. All right, that gives, that uh, brings uh, the Acolyte here to the, uh, to the forefront here, and getting her, getting a stun on her would be ideal, because that's going to prevent her from doing her uh, stress nonsense and her push-pull nonsense. All right, uh, Rinald is up, and we've got a uh, Bone Soldier right here, full health. I think a Smite might uh, help us out. We have a decent chance to kill it right away. Ooh, right on the nose. Perfect. And they, they, we denied them another attack. Perfect. All right, so, um, yeah, let's open up a vein. Okay, so, oh, oh, sure, she's not going to die, but she still gets that. Um, yeah, let's finish her off. we go. Good. See, loot, loot's being a bit better for us now. Um, I am going to pop our next torch here just to put
put us back to the, to the front, just so we can maybe get a scouting down here, so we can see what's going on in the front. Nope. Oh, but we got the surprise. So the other good effect for having a good torchlight here. Okay. Uh, just like in the tutorial, we want to focus on Big McLarge Huge here. Um, and stunning him would be ideal if we can, because he can dish out a lot of damage. Oh, not a good time for them to dodge. But at least I have another chance here. Um, and yeah, we want to lay down the dots as much as possible here, so we're going to hopefully blight him. Good, good, good. And we, yeah, we want to get the bleeds going too, since he's human and susceptible to that. Perfect. Um, all right, and well, let's go for the stun because again, we want to we want to stun him if at all possible. He's not going to act this round, but stunning him now will keep him stunned until it's his next action. Yes. All right. Um, all right. So since he's already stunned, um, I could go for um, a party heal here. And actually, that's probably the best bet. It's still so inefficient. I really wish I had that single target. Now, he already has a bleed, but you can keep stacking the bleeds. So it makes sense to just open up another vein. More bleeds is better. So he's got, he's gonna take six damage when it's his turn. Ooh, oh God. Oh, no, I don't want you to die here either. He's, oh, all right, virtuous, he's courageous. That was exactly what I needed. Uh, now I just need to heal him before, <laughs> uh, before it happens, before um, uh, our cutthroat uh, goes at him, because I don't want to lose our, uh, lose our uh, highwayman. He's, he's part of one of the teams I'm gonna be trying to build here. All right, let's take a shot at him. Eh, minimum damage. Hmm. Disorienting Blast might be interesting here, but let's see, 11, we've already got a Blight on him, but we can still stack the Blights. Um, but what's the, oh, the, um, actually this does, Incision does more damage. Um, let's go for the Incision. Is this the Bleed? Oh, he's, oh, thank you for missing that. Ah, oh, he was one point away. From missing that. Well, he's going to die next turn anyway, so we don't need to stun him. Uh, we, we can completely ignore him, which means, um, what's our options here? We can uh, throw, let's, let's throw down some emboldening vapors um, on, um, uh, on our crusader here. Because our other option is just to shuffle them with disorienting blast, but that's eh, not, not really that effective. Um, and we can't attack anyone else uh, with direct attack. Uh, so, might as well make use of that. Uh, I really, really want to go after them. And just doing this is just going to be a waste of attack because he's going to die right away anyway. So, let's buff ourselves. Can I heal? Oh, hey, that, well, that worked out. No, no, not a black. No! get a chance to heal him god damn it no I'm not running from this stupid blanket fire I should have tried I should have gone after the fusilier maybe trying to shuffle them to the front damn it damn it damn it oh that sucks that really really sucks those stupid traps all, uh, all shooting on him. What's the cause of that? All right, we're gonna go for uh, go for the damage plus the extra healing to her. Um, let's see, seven, two to four. Yeah, there we go. He's still not he's not still not effectively dead, but now we can do a zealous accusation to finish him off and get some extra damage on him. All right, we're the same thing. Judgment, give her a little bit of healing, give him a little more damage. Hopefully, dang it. Ow. Oh, wonderful. 
Wonderful. All right, enough, enough jibber jabber. Now, um, I could finish him right here and now. I don't want to because I want to get a heal off to protect him from the bleak. I don't have any bandages because somebody pocketed them. Um, and so we might just have another death here from uh, from bleeding ticks. Um, so in that case, emboldening. Hopefully our... I want to I stun him, but that's going to kill him anyway. Oh well. There we go. So, uh, in an emergency, and this is an emergency, uh, you can nom food for single hit points of healing. Um, so we're going to want to do that so uh, our uh, Plague Doctor does not collapse outside of combat since we don't have bandages. All right. Uh, I want to press on. Well, we have at least one more room battle to our name. I'm going to try and press on, uh, knowing that we can possibly uh, run away. That's not what I wanted. All right, we're going to get the heck out of Dodge here. Uh, as long as you don't have a... Yeah, we got a, we got a fearful doctor here. Yeah, all right. And there he goes. <laughs> or there she goes. Yeah, let's get the heck out of Dodge. Retreat failed. As long as you get away with one hero, you get to keep all the treasures you found. And we found a decent amount of stuff. All right, we're out of there. We are out of here. So yeah, um, there, there, this game is tough, and there are some things that'll happen that will, uh, will, will just force you into failure in this. As, as the little disclaimer at the beginning of the game warns you, uh, quests will fail, and missions will fail, party members will die, and things will have to be abandoned. And this is such a case. You need to know when to, to call it. Because if we'd have just pressed on um, and lost our whole team, we wouldn't be getting any of this. So it is a good thing that we got the heck out of there. Unfortunately, our disposable hero is one of the people who wasn't killed. Oh, dismiss. Why? All right, let's open you up. Night blindness. Yeah. Uh, you're getting worse and worse. Cre oh, creepy cough. Dang it. Uh, not a good start, but you know what? We've got our insurance policy. If you if you remember, um, we upgraded the uh, stagecoach network, so we're going to be getting four fresh heroes, and uh, we're going to probably have to. Well, we are definitely going to have to depend on those because both of our guys are maximum stress here. Not that I can actually heal her stress at all, so she's she's effectively done. I can't bring her on any more missions, and it's going to be a while for the sanitarium to be unlocked, so I can't get rid of one of her two uh, traits that prevents her from, uh, uh, and that, night, well, night blind, light below zero, well, actually, that doesn't really matter as far as that, but yeah, I just can't, I can't de-stress her, so she's effectively gone, so dismiss, sorry. Renault is worth salvaging, despite the fact they picked up a really nasty, uh, nasty uh, de uh, negative trait. So we will do some healing. Um, oh, okay. I like this. Uh, I like this lineup here. We can we can make a party out of these four. A, a decently balanced party. Um, so let's grab them. Let us grab them. All right, we are going to want to send uh, Reynold to uh, some some therapy here. Uh, now, because of Reynold's thing, uh, yeah, God fearing, he can only go and pray. Uh, had I had my choice, uh, see, here's a tip for 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 um, de-stressing. 
the lower, notice how, for example, well, I can't really show you as an example with Raynaud because he's only going to go in the transept, but the lower um, the um, stress relief is on this little list here, A, the more expensive it is, but B, the more stress that it will actually relieve. The penance hall has a higher base stress relief than, say, the transept or the cloister. Um, and it goes in that specific order, but that's also why it costs more. Now that being said, um, you know, if depending on how much stress you need to burn off, it, it is good to put them in the appropriate place. Now again, Reynald's got his negative trait, God-fearing, which forces me to put him in the transept. I would like to put him in the penance hall if I had a choice. Um, all right, but we can help, uh, help out a little bit. When it comes to between the, and the same, oh, by the way, the same rule apply, uh, applies to the tavern. The, uh, the brothel has the highest, uh, stress relief and the bar has the lowest um, but it's also cheaper now between the two of these um, I like actually upgrading and putting guys in the uh, in the Abbey mainly because the Abbey's upgrades utilize busts whereas the um, the taverns upgrades utilize paintings now granted paintings uh, um, it requires fewer paintings, but the guild hall um, wants paintings as well uh, to upgrade, and the guild's a little bit more important to upgrade. So I generally shy away from the tavern, unless I've got people that have traits that force them to relax in the tavern. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and uh, upgrade the transept here. Actually, upgrade it twice, because it's good to decrease the cost. We're still sitting on a fairly low amount of gold here. So it is worth uh, worth going for the extra upgrades. Uh, not we don't need two slots here. The, just the first two is enough to get maximum value for uh, uh, for your early. Uh, so Renald in there, confirmed treatment. So he'll be ready next week. Uh, well, ready-ish. He's not going to burn off all of his stress, but he's going to burn off enough for him to be, go back out in the field. Now let's take a look at uh, at our newcomers here. Um, so Blauet, our, uh, let's see, Thin-Blooded, Misses the Spot, not bad. Armorsmith, Slayer of Mankind, not bad at all, actually. All right, let's take a look at his skills. Chop and Hew, staples for that. Don't like that he's missing focus. Mm, he's going to be, he's going to be rather random in how useful he's going to be. Uh, with Stan, not bad. Solemnly, uh, good in a pinch. Uh, but... Yeah, I really want him to have focus, but you know what? I'm, I I am currently a beggar. I am not a chooser, so we'll take what we can get. Now let's uh, let's see our occultist. Oh, the yips, the freaking yips, and he can't meditate. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Um, quick reflexes. That's that's actually quite good. And ruins tactician. Well, we're gonna be in the ruins, so he's pretty good there. Um, all right, he's got he's got the heal. Um. Ooh, I really, really don't like this set of things. Ugh. Cause yeah, he will, he would he would shine with sacrificial stab. Yeah, he might just have to be a stun bot and uh, keep him towards the front. Um, if we keep him in the second thing, he also can keep Damon's pull, which is good for messing with the back rank people. Um, all right, so he, uh, so Blauet's going to be first rank. He's going to be second rank. Alson, dang it, not blow, no blinding gas. Plague grenade and incision and battlefield medicine. Um, yeah, we can make that happen. Known cheat can't gamble. Um, and guilty conscious, uh, weaponsmith. Um, all right, well, you know what? I, 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 that's not too bad in terms of uh, traits. Would have liked different skills, but we'll take it. And how about you? Ah, Dazzling Light. Oh, oh, perfectly skilled for a Vestal. All right, so you're, you're, you're going to be, you're, you're, I, I do not want you to go away. You're, you're going to be with us. Stout, uh, good, tough, even better. Demonania, I, I can live with that. So great, um, great uh, draw here on this Vestal. So I am confident in our, uh, in our uh, successes with the Vestal here. So in our next episode, we will take our new four emergency team out into the field. 
Can they fare better where our first team fared extremely poorly? Find out and tune in. So if you like this episode, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. Uh, so until next time, this has been Pinstar, signing out.